Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for May 24th, 2019. So, my goodness, we have had quite the roller coaster ride here in the last uh, last week, and uh, honestly, um, not all that unexpected. This morning in in, in the blog, I wrote that. Um, I struggle to understand, this morning we're getting a, a large gap up this morning, I said I struggle to understand what the purpose or what the cause of that is. There's certainly no change in any of the um, trade situation, nothing has happened there, that's what's created the sell off to begin with, nothing's happened there, there's no change there. Uh, the only thing I can really put my put my finger on is that we've uh, reached an oversold condition and that possibly the Theresa May um, resignation over there in the UK um, could bring on the idea, um, possibly bring on the idea that Brexit will not occur. And uh, the European um, our markets are up sharply on her exit, and maybe U.S. is responding to that. But there's really not really good justification, in my opinion, for this kind of move, other than just that really punishing um, aspect of um, beaten up traders. And that's what's been going on, obviously. And I've, I've mentioned several times that this market right now really favors the very quick uh, day trader and not so much the um, the swing trader because there's no edge in this market. So yesterday we get this gap down and we end up trapping in all of those folks that may have got kind of pulled into a long market here thinking everything was going to go up and they get trapped and then they sell off pushing the market lower. We start to rally back up then at the end of the day and now this morning on really nothing we get um, a, a massive gap up that's likely trapping anyone that happened to hold a short into the weekend. Now, for me, uh, this is not a complaint for me at all because I really have done exactly what I said I was going to do. I've traded very, very light. Um, any trades that I have made over the last few days have pretty much been really quick intraday trades. And there hasn't been any, um, any uh, major problems um, in my account as a result. But uh, when we see this kind of volatility, when we see this kind of uncertainty in the market, it really puts us in a position as traders. We have to learn to recognize those those clues and back up because I can imagine there's a lot of folks feeling pain from yesterday and now maybe feeling pain this morning as well. So kind of keep um, keep that in mind that sometimes it's better to just pull back when there's no edge in the market. Just pause and wait until the market kind of settles down. And here we have, we're going into a three-day weekend. We're going into a three-day weekend with plenty of uncertainty. We've got the uncertainty of the trade negotiations. And we can probably bet there's going to be news out in some way, shape, or form about these trade negotiations over the weekend. They're going to fire, you know, tweets and and, and rhetoric back and forth um, across at each other. And there's likely going to be um, uh, more tensions, uh, if at a minimum, between the U.S. and Iran with what's going on over there. So, you know, anything is possible, and that doesn't include anything that could pop up over the weekend. So kind of keep that in mind as you plan your risk forward into the weekend. And one thing to remember is that this gap up open, what we have to watch for in this open today is will there be buyers that actually follow through? And I think that's a little bit in question. Uh, what's the catalyst for buying? Nothing has really changed. And when you think about the long three-day weekend in here, um, it, it's po entirely possible that 
this gap up will be the biggest move of the day. And after that, we just kind of die on the vine as everyone kind of cleans up their accounts and we head into this weekend. Now, we could also see the possibility that this big gap up is going to place a little bit of a short squeeze in place, meaning that everyone caught short will be forced to cover their positions this morning well many will be forced to cover their positions if that occurs we could catch a little bit of a short squeeze rally this morning but once again i would not rule out the possibility the uh, the uh, entirely the possibility that we gap up and then we sell back off um, i'm not suggesting we're going to sell all the way back off but just a little bit of uh, selling off uh, in a pop and drop pattern so those are the kind of the three circumstances that could occur here but let's go one step further and let's take a look at the chart and let's see if this gap up really does anything to change the overall nature of the market certainly it's nice to see that we uh, we found a little price support in here and we had uh, that that little lift in the market at the end of the day but if we gap up into here I want you to notice gapping up into here does nothing to resolve the overall downtrend and it doesn't fix anything in any of these price resistance levels above that we still have to deal with in the chart. So keep that in mind. I, be very, very careful about chasing into this morning pop, thinking that all the worries are over in the market, because I just don't think that's true. And I think it could be setting up another potential trap for traders with um, this extreme volatility. So remember, if we do rally and we rally into these resistance levels, we still have that possibility of failing and moving back down. So watch that closely. If we do happen to pop and drop today, we'll want to watch uh, these price lows. I would expect the volume is going to be light enough today that we won't see um, an extreme sell-off if that does occur, um, but you never know. So watch these levels pretty closely. Let's take a look at the SPY real quickly. SPY, same situation. Um, SPY did a really good job of holding on to this price support that I'd marked in the chart here yesterday, um, rallying back up. And you can see we're getting a little gap up here this morning on the SPY. But once again, that gap up is not resolving the downtrend. It's not resolving the resistance levels in the chart that we still must respect if we do happen to rally. So once again, I would suggest be really, really careful chasing this gap this morning. Um, there is still entirely the possibility that that pop could move and we can continue to sell off. So watch that close. Now, we also want to uh, consider the idea that this could be a double bottom. Okay, so we have that possibility in the chart where we get this double bottom effect in, in the market. If we rally through here, wonderful. But remember, we've got to get through that downtrend and resistance. So the rule that I trade by is if I'm going to try and trade something, is I don't try to pick the bottom. I let the market rally up, prove it can hold the downtrend or a level of support, and then show me buyers stepping in. And this is where I get long the market. I have no reason or no need to try and speculate or pick the bottom. Institutions pick the bottom. Retail traders don't pick the bottom. They don't decide when the market's going to start going up. Um, we don't have the funds to do that. It's always the institutions that'll make that decision. Allow them to make that decision and then we get the opportunity to follow without the big risk in that um, that trade. Let's take a look at the cues. Uh, NASDAQ. NASDAQ actually made a new low yesterday following uh, following uh, excuse me falling through this rather important level of support. But at the end of the day, we ended up rallying back up to hold on to that support. Let's take a look at this morning and you can see although we are getting a little gap here in the NASDAQ, we're not getting a big move. As a matter of fact, we're gonna open probably close to yesterday's open um, in the market after that extreme sell-off. So um, not, not exactly a, a big warm and fuzzy here uh, for the tech sector uh, stocks, even though we are holding that support. So here's those situations again. We've got that downtrend in play here. If we rally back up into this area, 
we certainly have the possibility of that failure to fail along that resistance area or fail as we move toward those resistance areas, price resistance areas in the chart. Um, if we happen to uh, get that pop and drop where we open up this morning and see those sellers coming in, watch this level very closely here. This uh, The NASDAQ is really in a kind of a precarious situation at the moment. And if it were to really fail through this area, we have a pretty big open hole down here where we could drop significantly so watch that carefully if that were to occur let's take a look at iwm iwm um really saw some heavy selling yesterday and we dropped right back into this level of support but by the end of the day we ended up holding it this morning we're getting a little tiny gap up but it will not be a breach above yesterday's high so as of right now, even though we're gapping up in the Dow, we're not changing anything in these charts and any rally back into price resistance levels and trend resistance levels would be the thing we have to pay attention to in these charts. So kind of keep those things in mind as you plan your day. Just be really careful of getting caught up in the emotion and rushing into the market. Let's take a look at the VIX. Now that VIX, popped up yesterday but honestly didn't um, stay up as strongly as I would have expected with such selling in the market so the fear is a rather subdued it's a little bit interesting how this is playing itself out but a little bit of um, if this were to pull back and rest in here on this gap up this morning rest in this area right in this area is where we have that potential support so we'll want to be careful of that if we can slip back down below that support showing that fear starting to diminish we should be in good shape but if we hold anywhere in this area and see those buyers uh, coming here into the VIX then we could be in a little bit of trouble so keep keep that in mind let's take a look at T2122 it's that four week new high new low ratio and you can see we bounced all the way back down here yesterday and here we have testing 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 in this area and that's where we get our bounce and this morning we're getting that bounce um, in a gap up this morning the question is will it hold and will it be substantial enough to carry us on through and that that'll be the question so kind of keep an eye on t2122 we are in that bullish reversal zone where some kind of a move back up would be expected but also keep in mind we still have room to the downside we haven't closed the door on this we could still move down into this area as we've seen before we move all the way down into that area and stay down there for a little bit before we we pop so um, anything is possible here it's not giving us very good clues what we do know though is that we've opened a big door for potential upside moves so if a short squeeze or something like that does take hold we could we have plenty of upside room potential um, um, in, in t2122 let's take a look at our economic calendar for today economic calendar um, pretty light except we do have the durable goods orders here at 8 30 this morning um, and that definitely could move the market around today. If that order were to come in uh, better than expected or worse than expected, we could see a market reaction to that number. So kind of keep an eye on that. After that, don't expect much price action at all uh, in, in, uh, based on what we see in the, the um, economic calendar. On the earnings calendar front, we have a light day on the earnings calendar as well. Only about 13 companies are reporting earnings today. There are a couple of notables like Foot Locker, reporting looks like Foot Locker uh, missed on its earnings report gapping substantially down here this morning uh, BKE a lot of retail reporting um, looks like uh, it's hard to say if that's uh, reported or not yet so kind of keep an eye on those but I don't expect those to really be a major factor in the market today 
uh, at all. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a great day and I want to wish you great profits. And if this is the first time you've seen these videos, please do me a favor. Click that subscribe button on YouTube. Follow me button if you happen to watch the video on Facebook. Click those thumbs up buttons and leave a comment. Guys, um, every time you click those thumbs up buttons, every time you leave a comment, it helps the algorithm show these videos to more folks. And we can expand uh, this idea that m preparation for your day is much more important than luck. And if you take the time to be prepared, you'll do a better job in your trading. It's a, it's a bit of a calming effect when you do that preparation. You can see all the emotion in the market. You can see those price resistance and support levels that you need to be focusing on, and it helps you evaluate how you approach the market for the day. So if, if you find that useful, please do me a favor and, and click that. Uh, uh, thumbs up button, those subscribe buttons, and, and, and leave a comment. And also, please feel free to share this video with any friends and family. If you find it helpful, others might find it helpful. So just, uh, you know, post that link over on your Facebook or Twitter or whatever you use uh, for social media. And thank you to everyone who does that. You guys are the best. I truly appreciate that. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. There are some stocks of interest, even though I think it's everyone should consider very carefully their risk heading into the three day weekend. We know with the volatility that we have right now, it, it would just be like placing your bet on a roulette wheel um, for this long weekend. Which way are we going to gap on Tuesday? Who knows? You know, it, you know, roll the dice, decide what it is that you want to do. Um, but really, really consider carefully how much risk you carry into this weekend because of the nuttiness of this market right now. And holding over the weekend could really put you in a ugly situation, considering, uh, you know, the tensions on, on trade and tensions between U.S. and Iran right now as we head into the weekend. But having said that, there are good charts out there. There are places that you can look. Take a look at uh, Shopify. Shopify continuing to hold up very well. It just absolutely is ignoring what's going on in the market. Yesterday's sell-off creating created almost nothing here in the chart. Now this is is up here quite a ways, and we could see this kind of consolidate over toward the trend here before this goes. So don't think that this is a jump on trade right now. As a matter of fact, none of these trades that I uh, that I'm showing you here are are that they're just for your evaluation and consideration and should not be in any way uh, uh, suggestive of uh, a recommendation for a trade idea but something to keep an eye on um, take a look at monster beverage monster continues it had a little pullback yesterday but it continues to test this resistance level up here I'm not sure if it's gonna have the energy to break out considering the market condition but if it does Monster has some good upside potential. And one of the reasons I, 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 I'm even looking at Monster is because of the great price action that we've seen, whoops, that we've seen in Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, really nice move here um, um, in this chart in the last couple of days, looking really strong. And it's that defensive sector stocks that are looking so good. Let me jump back there to Monster and you can see that price action with that consolidation right against that price resistance um, in the chart. Pretty decent chart to be paying attention to um, going forward. And I apologize that I mistakenly had that on a on a uh, two-day chart. Let's take a, a, a look, um, a chart that I'm keeping an eye on that, that had a little bit of a problem yesterday, kind of sold off a bit, um, is Disney. Now this morning, Disney is getting a little bit of pop-up, not a, not a lot, not, nothing that I would be willing to just jump into. But Disney is one of those charts that I want to pay attention to, and largely because of this. If I pull this chart back, you can see this is a massive, multi-year wedge that's been formed and this is a weekly chart and that's one of those patterns that 
can really produce some great upside potential. Now we'll have to keep an eye on this because we gapped and moved so far based on them coming out with their new streaming service that it may take a lot more consolidation work before this is actually ready to go. But I want to keep an eye on Disney uh, for the near future. Take a look at um, uh, Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble is one of those charts that is in that defensive sector. Um, it moved up nicely, strongly, got a little bit of resting pullback coming in here, pulling back to its support level, trying to show that the buyers want to hold this in here. And in mar times of market uncertainty, there's a, a big rush often to these defensive sector stocks. So kind of keep an eye on that. We're looking pretty good here in Procter & Gamble. And and um, showing some pretty darn good signs here overall. Take a look at um, stocks like PepsiCo. PepsiCo holding up very, very well looking good here um, lots of strength in uh, again once of the one of these defensive sector stocks take a look at BAH BAH continuing to just march up this trend like it's not even paying attention to what's going on in the overall market um, great potential chart and it's continuing to show strength in the this market uncertainty now I would suggest being up this many days in a row a little rest a little pullback might be in order but you never know i mean if you take a look at a stock like um, um hershey it doesn't have to stop it can just keep moving up um, these defensive sector stocks can just keep moving up in an uncertain market like this so kind of keep that in mind um, as you look forward if you're looking for some of those short trades you know um, I, I mentioned a bunch of short trades that worked out really well um, uh, on our sunday class and um, one of those being Valero Energy. I would not chase this. I mentioned this Sunday as a possible short. Holy cow. Uh, that sure took off. I mentioned uh, Nike as a possible short on Sunday. That has worked out and continues to look uh, relatively bearish. I mentioned... Um, um, uh, Boeing as a possible short and on Sunday and that did take a short position but is rallying back right now and this morning gapping up so watch this as this approaches this downtrend area and resistance for a possible re-entry into a short if we get a move up into here and then failure so watch that one close lots of potential charts out there that could set up short I mentioned when on Sunday as a possible short that one certainly certainly worked out uh, very, very well. So lots of charts that could be setting up for those short trades. Um, one I looked at yesterday that certainly has that possibility for a short trade setup right now would be Dollar General. Um, making this lower high evening star pattern right here, this could certainly see that failure back down in here. And by the way, that happens to be right there around that 50 day moving average. So watch that close. If that continues to fall, there could be an issue here with Dollar General. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a great day, and I want to wish you a fantastic weekend. Be safe, everyone. Have a great time. You know, fire up that barbecue. Do something fun. Remember, it might be wise to just kind of slide into this weekend, light in your account with your money safely tucked in, um, all nice and protected as we head into the uncertainty of this weekend. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. And I'll talk to you all bright and early Tuesday morning. Have a great holiday, everyone.